to teach you photography, yes, as an art form, yes, if you want to make beautiful pictures, we're thrilled, we want you to take beautiful pictures. But we really want you to learn photography as a language to be powerful. I'm Sarah Maggie Lee. I live in New Mexico, United States. And I was a photojournalist for like 15 years. And now I teach photography. Um, I'm a photojournalist as well. I have three kids. And I have a 14-year-old and a 12-year-old and a nine-year-old, so don't think you can pull a fast one on me, because I, I, I have a little experience with teenagers, so um, I'm very excited to be here. Hi guys, my name is Mike. Um, I live in Hong Kong. I've been doing these things with Fred for a while. Um, I'm gonna be most of the time sort of behind the scenes, doing a little support work, but I'll float around and see a lot of you guys. Hey guys, I'm Sean. I'm based in Los Angeles, California. You're going to get a camera with your number on it, and that's your camera for the week. And here's Justin. Number eight is Sarah. There are three things that occur in this workshop. One, we teach our students fundamentally how to be essentially professional photographers. We bring them professional cameras, we give them professional instruction, they learn how to use these cameras on manual mode. By the time we're done with them, they can operate like any professional photographer. So basic but, but really uh, real photography skills is goal number one. Goal number two is to give them skills as a photojournalist, as a storyteller, to develop their ability to use photography as a language so that they feel empowered and they feel sort of liberated by their ability to do this. And the third uh, goal of the workshop is to create a body of work and these students will shoot over the course of a week. We show them how to edit it, we edit it with them, we critique them, so that when we leave, there is this, a real body of work. Today and tomorrow, those guys are gonna be your group captains. Can you guys raise your hands for me, <laughs> group captain? When we leave a location, we're gonna do a sweep and make sure we don't have any lens caps that have been left in a location or nobody's bag is on the ground or et cetera, et cetera. That's their job today and tomorrow, okay? After that, you guys are gonna start to cycle in and fill that, fill that role, okay? So we're gonna share the responsibility to make sure that nobody loses anything or leaves anything behind. I'm the head of education and scholarly programs for the museum. So since we've opened um, around a year and a half ago, we've been building the educational programs for the museum. And those are, some are formal programs like school visits, but some are informal programs. And we try to identify what are the ways in which we could engage learners from different backgrounds, from different abilities, to do programs in the museum and fulfill our mission, education, uh, empowering children and youth uh, through, um, I I through enabling them to have relevant, meaningful conversations about issues that are important for them. So when this program came to my attention, it, it's, one, it's one of the programs that seems to have similar aims, and aims as we do. It shares with the museum the uh, focus on youth, on changing the quality of life of youth by enabling them to see themselves in a different light, by providing opportunities, by empowering them to believe in themselves and in the way they can think about the world. So when you see someone where the aims are similar, where someone like uh, Fred Roberts, who has a worldwide reputation, he, his workshops have been carried out in different parts of the world, including uh, partner institutions to the museum, uh, institutions of the Aga Khan Development Network, in places like Tajikistan, Kyrgyzstan, and in Hyderabad in India, we know that the shared aim is going to be fulfilling and that the experience is absolutely worth 
going through. Using your cameras as a means of expression to say things that are going to change you and change the way you live and change your community and change the city and change the world. The background of our kids is really determined by a recruitment template which we developed. Half of the students are boys and half are girls. We like that gender interaction. Um, we also try and divide the students between what we call euphemistically city and country, which can mean rich and poor, it can mean cosmopolitan and rural. So you get also a cultural mix in addition to the gender mix. And, and uh, it's worked very well. I like having more than one element in my picture because then it makes it look different and then it makes it like almost like a story because it's just not it's not just the beginning but there's like a beginning a middle and an end so I guess like photography is like telling a story but with picture like a picture book um, but without any words so that's what I really like about it and also when when you did silhouettes when you change this depth of field when you tilted your horizon <coughs> Right? When, you, when you stuck the leaf on the side of a building, what are you doing? You're creating, like, creating something. You're making. You're thinking. You're, you're making, making pictures. Creative. You're not taking pictures. All of you are now making pictures. Every one of you is making pictures. And this is only two days. Monday or from from the very first day we start with here's how a camera works we go out and practice we come back we look we critique we practice again and by the third day they have assignments and they're working for a boss for an editor and they're telling stories through their viewpoint so their their lens of their heart and then they have three days of stories and then we we wrap everything up and show them this is what you did this week and it's kind of amazing <laughs> three themes this week and one was the Living Museum of the Aga Khan Museum here in Toronto and I was really especially excited about this story because um, I feel like a lot of people think of museums as, as static things on the wall hanging on the wall and and you stare at them and then you walk on but um, in fact we were really trying to show that the museum is a place with hands-on projects and art and and teaching materials and teaching activities that can be used by everyone who walks to the door. I like to uh, discover uh, things, new things, and, and photography. I really, uh, at first, I didn't know. I, I didn't know that I was gonna like it or something. But I learned lots of stuff about it. And it's not just like taking a picture, it's like there's more, in, more, more than that. So yeah, in the future, I, I like to travel a lot of places and I want to take pictures. It like pulls people towards me to tell, to like, it gives them something to help them talk to me or something. Because I'm like, I guess introverted and it's like, Sometimes people are like, oh yeah, I want to talk to you, but I don't know what to tell, to talk to you about. So when I, people see my pictures, they're like, oh, that's an awesome picture. Can you show me how to do it? And I'll be like, sure. I believe it was good for the students, the photography students, and to be able to see a museum used in such a way that, that there's a lot of activities, there's a lot of dynamic um, things going on within its walls. But very importantly, I think we have pictures that this museum I think would be very interested in using to show the activities that go on in the museum. And so I think uh, between what the students gain and what the museum gain is, is huge from those, those pictures. Perfect, perfect. Kids having a great time in the Father's Day with the help from number one. <laughs>
you know, they're gone. He's completely disconnected. But this kid, I mean, you gotta love this kid, right? I mean, everybody seemed to love him. Uh, soft on the focus a little bit, but I think he was moving. And, um, but it's just, it's, it's one of the great gestures and great moments. What we teach is, is uh, different from what they learn sometimes. Uh, we teach them how to use a camera, and we start with the assumption that no one knows how to use a digital SLR camera where they make all the decisions. We work in manual mode. So they come in and they have to learn how to balance light and how to make a, a picture, and we teach them the mechanics. What they learn is that they actually have a, a say in what their picture looks like, and we try to talk all week about their voice, their vision, how the pictures, you're not just taking pictures, you're making pictures, and that they come from the, the heart and they come from the head and not just from this box that holds light. Uh, Wendy, she's always saying that all of my close-up pictures are all like Justin style. All of my like favorite pictures are all close-ups and like focus on one part of the picture, not like the entire thing. So you'd see a lot of out of focus things and one really nice like in focus. Thing. shallow depth of field which allows us to just see this narrow strip it definitely highlights all the pins that she's working on the action is great we've got other information that tells us a little bit more about her job it's really really pretty the only other thing that you really can't control and I don't think it's a problem here but the light is the brightest thing in the shot but what is that doing for our picture where is it helping our photograph right here, right? So we need that light in order to make our focus on her hands. So as a, a second story for this trip was the music program at the University of Toronto Schools. They do a March break music camp every year that is student-led um, uh, student workshops for younger kids to get involved in music and the arts, performing arts, music, things like that. So again, we took the kids into a new location with a different set of technical challenges. It's, old building, it's inside, it wasn't very well lit sometimes, so there was interesting lighting conditions. And we let the kids, we let the students get in and photograph around while some of the workshops were going on. So, again, the, the goal was to get the students to interact with the students taking the workshop, uh, taking the music camp, and get them to try and tell the story of the music camp from a student's perspective. So, uh, already turned you into somebody different. If we were going to choose three days of uh, photo shooting uh, and choose three stories to tell, we looked at who are our educational pro uh, partners throughout the city. And one of our partners is the University of Toronto Schools. 
Because that school has something that is very similar to what we believe in, which is the engagement between different generations, between um, sort of young adults teaching younger children, between youth engaging with young adults. It's that intergenerational engagement and conversation that is wonderfully um, articulated and expressed at the University of, of Toronto Schools. And that's why we chose the UTS as a partner in this program. <laughs> I think it's about um, empowerment. So we have students who have never been able to approach a stranger in the street, as an example, uh, or walk into a new environment and operate um, with confidence. We give them that confidence. This, this process of photography is, is empowering. That's changed my mind. Something I'm thinking about how to make pictures. And I, I'm glad to say, um, it's better to think that it may be a better picture after I think and I made it. Fred taught me a lot. You can like explain a picture like in any language, but if you don't know a, like a language, you can like show the picture and they will understand it. of the workshop, one of the, um, one of the uh, tutors, uh, Sarah Megan Lee, started by saying to the students, uh, photography is writing with light. And I thought, what a beautiful sentence. It was, it was giving the, the students, the participants in the workshop, this idea that, first of all, you can learn to um, express yourself through different ways and photography is one of these ways. The workshop has really helped me open up to the world. I used to think that everything was just closed up and that things weren't as they always seemed. It's another language, like Wendy and Sarah always said. Um, I work with Vibe Arts. We're a nonprofit arts organization and we do arts education. Today we're uh, coming together with two different groups. The first group are a bunch of youth photographers who are in their own program at the Aga Khan Museum and they're doing amazing work learning how to take beautiful pictures. So they've come here to take pictures of the kids and then we're all going over to a senior's home called Harmony Hills and they're, the kids are going to dance with the seniors, so it's going to be like a giant dance party. We want to bring art to everyone and a lot of different communities. We work in underserved communities, um, so we work with kids who may not get the opportunity, and we want to bring that opportunity to them. Go Wilson! Go Wilson! Go Wilson! Go Wilson. Storytelling, I felt that my photo shoot at the daycare center was really impactful. I felt like taking pictures of those kids was really interesting. And although it was really technically hard to do because they're moving around, they're children, so they're constantly playing and they don't have a sense of 
like, oh, it's probably, I should probably stop moving because they're taking pictures. They're really just doing what they're doing and you can see them really genuinely dancing. So when we were telling the kids what their objective was, it was to capture the story and the interaction between different generations of people doing the same exact motion, kind of helping illustrate the fact that ultimately we're all the same. At every stage in our life, there are touch points that balance and match each other out. From now on, you're ruined. We've totally ruined you because now you're going to see the world differently all the way through. Every time you see something, you're going to be thinking about it. I feel like I did something that meant. I feel really accomplished. When I came here as a volunteer to work on the different um, the setup of the exhibition of for the pictures, I didn't quite have an understanding of how really how amazing these pictures were, and the overall aesthetic of setting them up as well as the beauty of taking them in. So some of the things we wanted to work on is there's amazing, amazing um, shots of nature and there's also amazing shots of um, architecture and people and so we wanted to contrast those because the main theme with the museum is the museum and the people in the museum. So we have the, sh the architecture and the people who are involved in this architecture. I'm very impressed. Um, I say thank you uh, for the organizer, thank you for you people, thank you for everything. I think he did a really good job. It really sort of illuminated himself. And for a person that used to laugh at me uh, for taking pictures of flowers, I love taking pictures. I became sort of a photographer about two years ago. But every time we had a family gathering, we used to take pictures. And we took, I took pictures of the family, then I would sidetrack and take pictures of flowers. So for me to see something that he's done with nature, I think is really cool. I think he's, you learn a lot when you take pictures because you take time to look at the fine details. And I think what he did with this picture, with especially the aperture uh, in this particular picture, I think he did a really good job. And now, now there's two people in the family that can get made fun of and uh, he's another one. <laughs> I'm uh, glad he has uh, joined the workshop and uh, he has done some amazing job and make some good friends, I guess. Do we have any parents here? Parents or family of the, of the students? Oh, good. People are waving. Well, I want to thank you. I want to thank you for having the courage to take your children and put them in our clutches for a week. Um, let me tell you, they're not the same. Uh, and I hope you like what they have become, uh, because we strive very hard to profoundly change them, and we hope you see the result of that. So our thanks to you for, for allowing them to attend this workshop. And my last thanks, before I give some comments about what we do, uh, my last thanks are 
for the most important people involved in this, the people who tried to be here on time every day, tried to stay focused, tried to stay awake, uh, got cameras in their hands and did things that adults would never do, um, and who really profoundly changed themselves and who gained confidence that will live with them for the rest of their lives. I want to thank the 24 fabulous students who were with us. Thank you. 